thank God for everything. We're recording that. And um, yeah, save salvation. That's what we're going to delve into here. Savior, uh, Savior, uh, salvation. And what I started with is the uh, <clears throat> pre existence of Jesus. I, I couldn't even believe there was a, a page on this. <laughs> But uh, that's that's what I started looking at first of all, and let me see if I got notes on that. Oh, I got this book here. Let me see. Okay, the pre-existence of Jesus. Um, yeah, I guess John one one would, would be a good place to start. But uh, let, let me just read this here. Yeah, the pre-existence of Jesus. This is from uh, McLean and Strong Encyclopedia. Uh, and his existence before he was born of the Virgin Mary. Um, that he, he really did exist is plainly taught in John. So, you know, we, we know there was a Jesus. You know, he did exist. And um, oh, what happened to my pages down here? Hold on a second. Um, what happened? Um... Where are my pages? Let me do this here, we'll do this. Hold on, sorry folks. I lost my, what do you call it? The bottom line, where all my things are here. All right, I'm gonna have to close all of these out. Sorry for that. Here's my uh, Hebrew, there's this. And it's my uh, dictionary. There's this. There's that. And there it is. Okay, so we're going to do this here. We'll start here. And Jesus. Ah. So, uh, John. I think. I did have something on this, but I'm going to have to open up a page here and put these verses up here. So let's do it like that. So organized I am, you know? Yeah. So, and then John. Um, uh, John 3.13, John 6.50 and 62. And... I'm just going to look up, look up these verses. Instead of reading all the, I'll read this, and then I'll give you some verses later on. He says, um, he, he really did exist. <laughs> but, but there are various opinions respecting this existence. Some acknowledging with the Orthodox that in Jesus Christ there is a divine nature, a rational soul, and a human body go into an opinion peculiar to themselves. His body was formed in the virgin's womb, but his human soul, the first and most excellent of all the works of God, they supposed, was brought into existence before the creation of the world. And we know that, you know, before the foundation of the world. I mean, he was uh, crucified before the foundation of the world. He was with God uh, when, when, when everything was made. Uh, and you can read that. He uh, was mentioned as being wisdom in, uh, in uh, Proverbs. Uh, and he subsisted in happy union in heaven with with the second person of the Godhead until his incarnation. So uh, this doctrine is thus clearly set forth by Bishop Bull in his defense of the Nicene Creed. Uh, all the Catholic orators of the first three centuries taught that Jesus Christ, he who was afterwards so-called, existed before he became man or before he was born according to the flesh. Of the Blessed Virgin in another nature than the human nature that he appeared to holy men, giving them an earnest, that's like a pledge, as it were, of his incarnation, uh, that he always presided over and provided for the church, <clears throat> which in uh, time to come he would redeem with his own blood, and of consequence that uh, from the beginning, the whole order or thread of the divine dispensation, as Tertullian speaks, ran through him further yet that he was the father. He was with the father before the foundation of the world and that by him all things were made. <clears throat> and a lot of 
verses jump into your head you know john 17 and when jesus was speaking to the apostles he says i was with the father before the foundation of the world and he's telling the father you know all the things there and um uh and and that by him all things were made that's john 1 1 you can just read that right there so, um so those who advocate this doctrine differ in their christological views from uh th those are called arians uh, those that are free will people for the a latter ascribe to christ only a created deity whereas the former hold is true and proper divinity and we know he was uh, fully divine and fully human he was 100 percent both you know and I, would, I read that somewhere i mean i've been saying that for years and i just read it today maybe i, I read it years ago when i've been saying this but who knows whatever came first but I, well, we know what he was he was 100 percent divine and 100 percent human <clears throat> so they differ from the so Sinians, who are another sect of people who believe no existence of Jesus Christ before his incarnation. And then you have the Sabellians, who, who, who only own a trinity of names. And they differ also generally, uh, the generally received opinion, which is that Christ's human soul began to exist in the womb of his mother in exact conformity to that likeness unto his brethren, of which St. Paul speaks in Hebrews 2.17. Uh, the writers in favor of the pre-existence of Christ's human soul recommend their opinion by these arguments. And they go, it goes on to, to, to talk about how we, we know that Christ existed uh, before he became uh, incarnated here. And, and there were uh, many places in the Old Testament where he appeared uh, to men. Um, he came to Abraham, he came to uh, Lot, he came to a few other people. Uh, I don't have the exact verses. I should have put those down because those are some things where we know that he, you know, he was in the garden. <laughs> I mean, uh, the, he was the one that, that who, who else could Adam see? Because uh, no one can see God and live. So anybody that's talking to God in the Old Testament is talking to Jesus, uh, pre-incarnate, uh, before he, he became man here. And um, let me just give you some, what was that one that was Hebrews? Um, 217 <clears throat> it was 217 he became man um, and he thought it not uh, robbery what did I say it was 217 I got a mind like a sieve man it goes in and right out wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people and we know John uh, 1 1 John 1 1 okay. uh, in the beginning was the word the word was with God the word was God the same was in the beginning all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made that's it that's Jesus in the beginning uh, and John 3.13, John 3.13, yeah, I don't have those verses down where he was walking around in the Old Testament, but we, we know that they are, like I said, starting from the garden, uh, and, and, and Abraham, and, you know, when the three people came to him, and, and, and Abraham bowed himself, the guy didn't say, don't get up, I'm a man, don't, don't bow to me, I'm a man, he, he let him bow to him. So you, he, if you let him bow to him, that means he was Jesus. 313. Uh, and no man ascendeth up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the son of man, which is in heaven. And that's it. He was in there. And then uh, on uh, 8, uh, 42 and 58. It's my, uh, it's my 8, 42 and 58. My camera is on, isn't it? I want to turn, I want to turn that off. Uh, John 8, uh, 40, no, John 8, I got 18 here, 8, 42, and then 58, so I'll take this out and this out, so then, uh, Jesus said unto them, uh, if God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me, so he was with God before he was here. And God sent him, and in age 58, he says, uh, Then Jesus said unto him, Verily, 
Verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. And there's, there's the word uh, that uh, uh, Moses asked God. He says, uh, who, who do I tell him to send me? He said, I am. John, this is Alex. Your camera is still on. I don't know if you want to turn it off. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. I want to, I want to turn it off. I think that's the right there. There we go. All right, thank you. Very good. Yeah, we don't need we don't need distractions. But he's showing them mug here, especially my mug. John seventeen. I love John seventeen. If I had nothing else to read, I would I would read that John seventeen. Five and twenty four. Mm. 18, 5, I got to get a new computer here, 5 and 24, and Jesus, this is Jesus speaking, he says, now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory that I had with thee before the world was, so, you know, we don't have to go back into the Old Testament and, and, and point out all the times that he was here on the earth, uh, pre-incarnate, because even before that, uh, before the garden, before everything else, he, he was with the Father. And, and he was with God in heaven. So, and five, and then 24, we'll go down to 24. He says, Father, I will that they also, whom they thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Um, that's uh, proof enough for me. And uh, First John uh, looks like one two. First John one two. Uh, for the life was manifested as as we have seen it, and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. That's it. Was with the Father. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, our own hands have handled the word of life. So they're just talking about him as he was manifested here in his incarnation. Um, uh, which was with the Father. So when he says which was with the Father, it means that he was in heaven and he came down from heaven. Uh, that's the one that we declare unto you that uh, you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son Jesus Christ and 633 John John 633 633 uh, for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world and 38 he says um uh, for i came down from heaven not to do mine own will but the will of him that sent me and then uh 50 is out of here 50 uh, uh 51 50 and 51 this is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I give him is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. In 62, he says, um, What? Uh, and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before. <laughs> so... If that's where I was. What's the big deal? I came, I, I came down. I'm going to send up again. You know, John 13 and three. John 13 and three. Right. Should Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into His hands, and that He was come from God, and went to God. And this is at the last supper. He rises from supper, he laid aside his garments, took a towel, he girded himself, and he became the servant and washed their feet. So, uh, but the main of uh, John three thirteen is and that he came, he was come from God, 
and then he went to God. And then uh, 16, 28 to 30. 16, 28 to 30. I came forth from the Father and am come into the world again. I leave the world and go to the Father. There's proof right there. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now thou speakest plainly and speakest no proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. And Jesus says, Do you now believe? No. Yeah. We believe, and then Proverbs 8.22, this is the uh, one about wisdom, and this is associated with him. Proverbs 8 and 22. FF, uh, the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. I was set up from the everlasting from the beginning, wherever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding in water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the, of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the deep. Uh, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandments, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was to his daily delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. So it's speaking of wisdom, but... Uh, you can just substitute that for Jesus. And then uh, 1 Peter 1.20. 1 Peter 1.20. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. And it's speaking of Jesus, I'm not, I take it out of context, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, uh, the, with the precious blood of Christ, uh, as of a lamb without blemish or spot, who was, or verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest as in his last times for you, who by him do believe in God, and that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Uh, all these verses just proving that he was here before the foundation of the world. At Revelation 13 and 8, and that he was manifested here for us to be our Savior. We'll get into that, hopefully. Uh, Revelation 13 and 8, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So everything was done already in the eyes and in, and in the mind of God. So, uh, and also something from a clinic and strong, it, it, it was the human soul of Christ that endured the weakness and pain of his infant state, all uh, the labors and fatigues of life, the reproaches of men and the sufferings of death. And that was good. It was the human soul of Christ that endured the weakness and pain of his infant state, all the labor and fatigue of his life, the reproaches of man, and the sufferings of death. Um, the covenant of redemption between the Father and the Son is made before the foundation of the world. So he was sent by God to be our savior for our salvation. Uh, John um, 5, 37, John 5, 37, right? 36 and 37. Um, but I have greater witness than that of John for the, the works which the Father had given me to finish. 
the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. And the Father himself, which has sent me, hath borne witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. So the Father sent him. And 8.18, I don't know if we read this. 8.18, is there any? No, what am I looking at? John. Uh, 8.18. Right? Yeah, 8.18. I got that revelation thing up there. Uh, I uh, am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. So the Father sent him. And uh, there's a, 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 a phrase uh, that I read, and I wrote it down here. Uh, Jesus becoming man is known as the hypostatic union. I don't know if it's in a dictionary here, but I forget where I read it. Hypostatic union. Hypostatic. Let me see. H Y P O S T A T I C. Hypostatic union. Uh, something that settles at the bottom of a fluid, the setting, settling of blood in the dependent parts of an organ or body. Uh, the substance or essential nature of an individual, something that is hypostatized. Hypostatic, let me see if they, uh, it's probably not going to show me, but I, I'd have to look up hypostatic union in some kind of dictionary here. Uh, union in one hypostasis, especially the union of the divine and human natures of Christ in one hypostasis. There you go. So that's the hypostatic union is what it's called. Uh, uh, Jesus becoming man is known as that. And uh, I tell you, man, there's just so many places to go with this. Um, we can start with Jesus here. Uh, or Soter or Savior. Um, let's just get do this and see what we got. Um, I had a lot of stuff here. I was looking at a uh, concise dictionary, um, dictionary. Um, the, the Bible is about Jesus. Um, yeah, I put this on the side over there. I got Easton's. There's a lot of stuff there about Jesus, what it means. Fawcett, I put this over here. So maybe I'll read Fawcett's. And we just can't read all of this. The In International Standard uh, Bible Encyclopedia. Um, but there's so much stuff on Jesus, and all this stuff is in the back of your King James Bible. If you look it up uh, on Jesus, you'll find all of this stuff here. But I pulled this out, this Fawcett <coughs> Dictionary, and, and this other one here, the Dictionary of Theology. I just pulled these up. Uh, so Jesus, the, the word is Joshua, actually. Uh, it's the Greek of Joshua or Yeshua or Yahashua. Uh, salvation of Jehovah is actually what the, what the word means. And we'll look at uh, Acts 7:45, uh, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drave out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David. And this is. Uh, What's his name? Stephen, before he got uh, martyred, uh, talked about uh, Jesus. And he uses the word here. Jesus. Uh, Jehovah is salvation. Exactly what it means. Jehovah is salvation. And when you look at Joshua in the Old Testament, uh, Moses is the uh, uh, successor. Uh, it, it's the same name, uh, Joshua and Jesus, same thing, Je Jehovah is salvation, is actually what it means, and that's how we're going to get into uh, salvation and, and soteria and all that good stuff. In Hebrews 4, 8, it's the same things, for if Jesus had given them rest, then uh, would he not afterward have spoken of another day? Okay, so it's just giving you the definition of, of Jesus right there, uh, called justice, uh, okay, Jesus Christ. Um, uh, Jehovah salvation uh, for he himself saves his people from their sins. Um, 
um, Matthew 1 21 uh, and he shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins so he, there's the definition there you you'll see a lot of times where a verse will have a word and a definition right in the same verse so um, Jesus is is the the Jesus is salvation and he shall what he shall save his people so we're going to look at this a little bit uh sozo uh, there's a whole bunch of verses on that sozo means save uh to keep safe and sound and there's a couple of offshoots of that i want to look at first before we get into sozo because like i said it's it's <laughs> i don't know how many pages there was uh, a couple of dozen pages uh save his people from their sins and that's basically what it's all about you know saving us from our sins, uh, something that we can't do ourselves. Uh, Greek Messiah, which also means anointed. And uh, when you look at Messiah here in the uh, in the Old Testament, it's uh, it's Mushiach. So you ever see the, the the Jews running around today saying Mushiach is coming, Mushiach is coming. You know, well, he's already here. And you killed him. <laughs> you know. But that's the word they use, Mushiach, uh, the anointed. It means anointed or uh, the anointed one, Messiah, the prince. Um, and then uh, anointed, uh, first Samuel, uh, the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces out of heaven. Shall he thunder upon them? The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth and shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn. Of his anointed his messiah um i'm not going to get into all these words all these verses here but uh uh this prophets priests and kings were anointed uh the being types of him who combines all three in himself and that's that's what jesus was he was the priest he was the king and i guess you could say he was the prophet too you know so prophet priest and king and what did they have to be they had to be anointed um types of himself uh deuteronomy 8 18 18 and 8 um i will raise up and he's speaking to moses and he says i will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee moses and i will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that i shall command him and that prophet most likely was jesus and uh, zechariah 6 13 even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory, and he shall sit and rule upon his throne, and she, he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the, the counsel of his peace shall be between them both. So, priest and a king sitting on the throne with a crown. And by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are being sanctified. Hebrews 10 five seven fourteen uh sanctified we'll get into sanctification a little bit later he says um hebrews 10 5 uh wherefore when he cometh into the world he saith, sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not but a body thou hast prepared me then said i lo i come in the volume of a book it is written to do thy will O god uh for by one offering he hath per perfected forever them that are sanctified and then Hebrews 7 25 wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him seeing he liveth to make intercession for thee so those three were taken out of context but you know what that means um, Christ or the Messiah was looked for <clears throat> by all the Jews as he should come according to the Old Testament prophets God with us that's Emmanuel declares his Godhead also, uh, John uh, 1, 1 to 18, we read all of that. In the beginning was the word. The New Testament uh, shows that Jesus is the Christ. Whoops. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, sinless himself. There's a lot of stuff here. I can't read all this. Um little is recorded of his childhood uh, but as uh, as much as the spirit sought safe for us to know 
so we don't know what, it, what what happened to us. We know he was born. Uh, the next time we hear from him, he's like 12, 13 years old, and he's in the temple, uh, blowing the minds of the of the, the people in the in the synagogue. Uh, so prone is, and then you don't don't hear from him after that for another what, eighteen years until he's uh, he he comes on the scene and, and John baptizes him. So we see we got his birth, we got him when he was about twelve years old, and then we got him when he was uh, on uh, getting baptized in the Jordan. So in between the, you know, his birth and when he's twelve years old, we know nothing, and from twelve years old till he sh he shows himself on the Jordan, we know nothing. So uh, we know what we were supposed to know. That's all. Uh, so prone is man to lose sight of, of Christ's main work to fulfill the law and pay its penalty for our stead. Uh, the reticence of, of scripture as remarkably shows God's inspiration of it as its record and revelations. Had the writers been left to themselves, they would have tried to gratify our natural curiosity about his early years. <laughs> but a veil is drawn over all the rest of the sayings for the first 30 years. He waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom. He increased in wisdom. That's all it says, uh, which proves that he had a, a reasonable soul capable of development as distinct from his Godhead. Um, here we go. Perfect God, perfect man uh, of a reasonable soul and human flesh subsisting. So he was God and man. 100% of each. There's a lot of stuff here. I can't read it all. Uh, you see where this bar is? It's way up here. <laughs> Look, way down, way down, way down. We can't read all of it. Um, but it's just telling you all about, about, about Christ, you know. Uh, his sentences on the cross were the perfect seven. Uh, and we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. All, the, all his words on the cross, what he said. The last the seven words that he said um angels witnessed to mary magdalene uh spices and all they came the trembling woman returned from the sepulcher uh, not saying aught to any they met through all but when they reached the apostles telling the tidings with great joy that jesus is risen and as he said on the eve of his passion is going before the heretofore scattered sheep into galilee to gather them together again so that's what his purpose was. Yeah, let me see what the last thing is down here. Um, <clears throat> after his promise that they should be witnesses from Jerusalem to the othermost parts of the earth, the last glimpse of him was in the act of blessing. In Luke 24, 51. And it came to pass while he blessed them that he parted from them and carried up into heaven. That's it. They didn't see him with uplift of him. Even as his sermon on the mount began with blessing, he was carried up into heaven, a cloud receiving him out of their sight. Uh, even as his elect shall be caught up in clouds, First Thessalonians 4.17. And as behold, he cometh in the clouds in Revelation 1.7. So as, as he went up, he'll come back. Uh, angels announced to the disciples, gazing with strained eyes upwards, that the same Jesus shall return in like manner as they saw him go up into heaven. Uh, probably the same mountain. Zechariah 14, 4 and 5. Uh, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount uh, of olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west and there shall be a very great valley uh, and half of the mountain shall remove to the north and half of it towards the south uh, and you shall flee to the valley of the mountains for the valley of the mountain shall reach to azal yea you shall flee like as you fled from before the earthquake in the days of uzziah king of judah and the lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. So this looks like uh, that's uh, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof, towards the east and towards the west. 
and there shall be a very great valley. Wow. Okay. And Azal is, <clears throat> it's not known as a place in the margin, and it's not read as a proper name. Uh, should perhaps be rendered very near. The way of escape shall be made easy. If a proper name, it may denote some place near the western extremity of the valley here spoken of, but um, they don't think it's a, it's a place. Um, and to, to the limit, the limit to which the valley or cleft of the mouth of Olives will extend when Jehovah shall go forth to fight against those nations which shall have assailed Jerusalem. The Hebrew name means adjoining uh, or near the city, the valley reaching up to the city gates will enable the citizens fleeing to escape. Just let me get the uh, Strong's number for that. Azal. Uh, Azal. 682. Azal. Proximity. Uh, he has reserved. So if it's a if it's a place, it's near Jerusalem, uh, but it means reserved. Uh, comes from atzal to take, uh, reserved, kept, strained to lay beside. So it's it's next to, could be a place. I don't know. Um, thus, there were ten appearances of the risen Savior recorded nine in the Gospels and Acts, and one in 1 Corinthians 15, namely to James, on the independent testimony of Paul, who mentions all those to men which, which the Gospels record, also the special one to himself after the Lord's ascension. Uh, so there's 10, you can take that to the bank. I thought there was eight, but there's 10. Um, most of the above is gathered with official uh, differences, however, from Bishop Ellicott's valuable life of Christ, four stages of development in the order of the fullness of Christ's teaching have been traced. Uh, uh, in the first year, a slight advance on the teaching of John the Baptist, the second year inaugurated by the Sermon on the Mount, and the third year, the teaching of the parables, setting forth the name, constitution, and future prospects of the earth. Uh, the fourth year, the sublime discourses in the upper chamber recorded by John just before his betrayal and crucifixion. So these guys uh, took uh, took part in that and uh, they recorded what they could out of the life of Christ. And uh, this one here is the Dictionary of Theology. And we know that the Bible is about Jesus. And that's what it's all about. He says uh, in Luke 24, uh, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. So there were so many scriptures uh, in the Old Testament that, uh, you know, Isaiah 53, uh, all, all of the scriptures that pertain to him, to Jesus. And Luke 24, 47, 44, he says, and he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was with, yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So we can go back and look at all this stuff. Uh, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. John 5, 39, and Hebrews 10, 7, he says, Then said I, lo, I come, in the volume of a book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. So, so many prophet, prophecies, psalms, and, and other scriptures are written uh, about Jesus. So, uh, the prophets prophesied of him, uh, the Father bore witness of him, we read that, the Holy Spirit bore witness of him, uh, the works of Jesus uh, did bore witness of him, uh, John 5, 36, 10, 20, we read that. The multitudes bore witness of him, John 12, 17. And Jesus bore witness of himself, uh, John 14 and 6, and 18 and 6. He says, Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And 18 and 6, as soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, it went back when it fell to the ground. I like that one. <laughs> This rendition of when they, when uh, Judas came to him with the uh, the guys with the staves and the, 
And he says, uh, I mean, one time I read that, I said, I never read that before. He says, uh, in John <clears throat> 18 and 1, it says, when Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Kedron, uh, where was the garden, into the, the which he entered, and his disciples, and Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oftentimes resorted hither uh, with his disciples. So Jesus, Judas knew where they were going to be. Uh, after, you know, the, 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 the supper, G Jesus said to him, what thou doest, do quickly. So this is, this is what happened afterwards. Judas then, having received the band of bandit officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, came thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Uh, I mean, I'm sure Judas didn't think they were going to do anything uh, like that. But uh, as we know, uh, he felt uh, sorry for what he did. He didn't, um, he didn't repent. He just felt bad. Uh, and he went out and he killed himself. And uh, Jesus, therefore, knowing all these things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto him, whom seek ye? They answered him. They said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto him, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with him. And as soon as he said it to them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. That's in, in no other rendition. It's only in this gospel. But that must have been some sight, you know. Who are you looking for? Looking for Jesus. I am he. And then everybody that was in front of him just fell down. <laughs> Then he asked them again, whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. He says, I have told you that I am he. If you therefore seek me, let these go their way, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, which he spake of them, which thou gavest me. I have lost none. And that was in John 17. And then this is where Simon Peter, uh, he drew his sword. He smote the high priest's servants and cut off his right ear. And the servant's name was Malchus. That's only in this gospel here. And um, we knew, now we know it's the high priest's servant, who was, uh, I forget the name, Caiaphas, I think was the high priest here. Uh, then said Jesus unto Peter, put up thy sword into the sea, the cup which thy father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Uh, then the band and the captain and officers of the, of the Jews took Jesus and bound him, led him away, and we know the rest. So Jesus is God in the flesh, we read that. He is fully God and fully man. That's in Colossians 2.9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. <clears throat> uh, he has two natures. Here it is, God and man. He's not half God and half man. He's 100% God, 100% man. He never lost his divinity. He existed in the form of God. And when he became man, he added human nature to himself. Philippians 2, 5 to 11. Uh, Let this mind be in you, which also is in Christ, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made of himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, that he was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. <clears throat> Wherefore, uh, God hath also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So for God's glory. And therefore, there is a union in one person of the full human nature and a full divine nature. Right now in heaven, there is a man, Jesus, who is mediated between us and God the Father, 1 Timothy 2.5. For there is one God and one mediated between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Uh, Jesus is our advocate with the Father, 1 John 2.1. My little children, these things are right unto you, that you sin not, and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. <laughs> He is our Savior, uh, Titus 2.13, <clears throat> uh, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. He is our Lord, Romans 10, 9 through 10. Uh, he is not, as some cults teach, 
an angel who became a man, Jehovah's Witnesses or the brother of the devil, Mormonism, so these guys, you know, <laughs> the devil Mormonism. <laughs> he is holy God and holy man, the creator, the redeemer. He is Jesus. Uh, let me see there what they got here. It says, um, Jesus adding to himself the nature of man by becoming one of us is known as, yeah, this is where I read this, is coming known as the hypostatic union. Errors dealing with the relationship of Jesus' two natures. Uh, we're not going to get into all of that. Um, Jesus only movement, we're not going to get into that. Okay, so, and there's two, two times where the Messiah is in the Old Testament, is in Daniel 9.25 and 9.26, and we, we covered that basically last week. We went through some of that. Uh, 70 weeks of Daniel. And it's speaking, speaking of Messiah, speaking of Jesus. And then in, uh, in, the, in the New Testament, you got the word Messias. Uh, Messias, Messias, or the anointed. Uh, and it's uh, John 141. Um, um, he first finds his own brother Simon and said unto him, We have found Messias, uh, Mushiach which is being interpreted the Christ and uh, the Christ the Christ is is Christos which means anointed uh, and it comes from Krima I think uh, Cairo which is anoint so he's the anointed and that's Kreomai to use to receive a loan to immune treat okay uh, Christos, Christ the Messiah. And then in uh, John 4.25, the woman saith to him, I know that the Messiah cometh, <coughs> which is also called the Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Can't wait. That's that for Messiah. And <coughs> I have, uh, let me see, Soviet... Let's go to Savior, I think. Uh, I got a few things on Savior. What is my dictionary? Where is my... Oh, this, uh, I got a few things here. They, uh, I'll give you some definitions here. That's what we're all about, man. Defining words here. Uh, there's Savior. There's three things on Savior we can read. If you want to make a night of it. And I, I went through deliver, escape, uh, and all of these words. I'll give you these real quick. Uh, we're probably not going to get into any of these other than maybe uh, uh, pull out a verse or two here and there. Uh, but um, these are uh, words that I, I looked up for um, salvation, savior, uh, deliver, and things like that. So this one here is uh, 5337 in the Hebrew. It's natsal, <laughs> and it means to deliver or to recover or to escape, to snatch away. Uh, Theological word book of the Old Testament, 1404. A lot of stuff here. We can't go through all of it. Um, let me see here. Not going to read that. But uh, And there's a bunch of verses on that. How many verses are there? Is uh, 213 verses having to do with uh, delivering, snatching away, and this other one here is uh, 4422 in the in the Hebrew, and it's molat. It means escape or deliver, to slip away, to escape. And I was just looking at all kinds of words that uh, had to do with uh, delivering, escaping, and this is what I came up with. Uh, and you can see here galal yasha. That's the Nasal, Palat, Shalom. All these words have to do with that. Uh, look at that. Theological Dictionary 7, which would be the one for uh, Sozo, I believe. And there's a bunch of uh, pages on, on the Hebrew, 971 to 973, and 978 to 980. Hopefully we, we can get into some of that. And there's another one in um, Theological Dictionary 6, which I also looked at, and that's the word um, Rhema, 998, and we'll look at that word too. So I like the bibliographies, they help you out. <clears throat> so Theological Dictionary 6 and Theological Dictionary 7 
we'll, we'll get into that too a little bit if we have time. But this other word, palat, is uh, 6403 in the, in the Hebrew. It means to deliver, a deliverer, to escape. And it's Theological Word Book 1774. Uh, see what their uh, bibliography is. Uh, TDNT 4, page 196 to 209. TDNT 4. What would that be? Hold on a second. Let me pull this out. TDNT 4, uh, page 196. I'm just curious what the word is. Uh, begins with an L. 196. The remnant in the Old Testament. Um, wow. Lima, L E I M M A. I never looked at this. I did have something on the lines here. Remnant. So in the Old Testament, there are four words to express the idea of remnant or being left or delivered or having escaped. So all of these, I mean, you just bing, bing, bing all over the place. And um, yeah, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to look at the, the Greek uh, word here. I'm not familiar with it. L E I M M A, hupo lima, and kata, katalipo. Uh, L E I M M A. I'm so curious now, I gotta look that up. L E I M M A. Hold on a second. L E I M M A in the Greek L M M A L E I whoops L E I M M M A A L A L I L E I M L here it is Lima Remnant three thousand five Lipo a remainder three thousand five <clears throat> three thousand five. This I study I just go from one word to the next and um Let's see where it takes me here. So this is the word. But I forgot where I even started. Look at this one one time. Even so, at this present time, there is also a remnant, according to the election of grace. And it's the and it comes from three thousand seven. Comes from three thousand seven, which is one thing the lackest lipo. Wanting, lack, be wanting. It's not exactly the deliverance and escape and stuff, but I was just curious as to what that was. So I took you there. And now I forgot where I was. So let's start all over. Oh, yeah, I was looking at these words here 6403, palat, deliver. And then it's another one here <coughs> 2502 is kalats. Uh, to remove, to draw out, to deliver. Uh, 2502, we're probably not going to run into much of that. And these two here, are, we're very familiar with. Uh, redeem and redemption, uh, 6299 is Pada, which is uh, redeem or to ransom or to rescue or deliver. Uh, there's 59 verses on that. Theological word book, 1734. There's a lot of stuff on ransom. We know about that. Ransom, deliver. Um, Fulake and all of that stuff. That's good. Look at that. That's Pada. Another main one for redeemed. And it's, uh, I got to get a new, uh, new laptop here. This one's terrible. Ga Gaal is redeem, a redeemer. So these two are synonymous here. The 6299 and the 1350 in the, uh, in the Hebrew to redeem. Act as a kinsman, redeemer. And that's where you see that in Ruth. Uh, so that's that. Those are some definitions, and then uh, more definitions here in the uh, in the Greek. 
talking about delivering and, and saving. So deliver here is uh, paradidomai. Sounds familiar? It comes from para and didomai. Didomi, I think, means to give. Yeah, to, didomai means to give. And this is paradidomai, so it's deliver. To give into the hands of. So it's not really delivering. It's delivering up. Uh, it could mean a positive thing or a negative thing. Um, uh, to give itself, to give up, to deliver. The judge will deliver thee to the officer. And uh, uh, Judas Iscariot, who betrayed paradidomai, uh, gave up uh, Jesus. Um, when John had heard that he were, was cast into prison, when Jesus had heard that when John was cast into prison, paradidomai. So that's the paradidomai. And then you got this uh, 5406, which I spent some time on this. I'll probably read some stuff from this. This is ruomai, uh, means deliver or deliver to draw oneself out. And uh, there, the, the Septuagint, uh, this word goes back into the Old Testament, but you can't find it uh, by looking up the number because they have verses that have this word in it, but the number's not next to it, but it's, it's in there. Uh, I was shocked when I looked up that there was no 45, uh, 4506 over here, but all of these, there's a lot of verses uh, that have this word rule my but don't have the number next to it you'll see that a lot in the septuagint you'll see uh um the word rule my let me see if it's here uh without the number next to it uh here it is rule not asked it uh that's no, push uh yeah, my but it, it's it's in a lot of places where they have the the, the Greek ruomai uh, translated in the Septuagint, but you can't look it up on, on one of these sites here because it doesn't have the number. And I was shocked to find that out. So, but uh, that's the ruomai. And then uh, 1807 is the uh, ex aero. Uh, it comes from ex and aero. You know what aero is uh, to choose, you know, heromai, heresy, to choose for oneself. Arrow means to take up or to take away, to elevate. Arrow. Uh, this is ek arrow. Uh, and uh, come down. Uh, Acts 734. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people, which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning, and I have come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send thee into Egypt. And this is uh, Stephen telling his story before they stoned him. Uh, and Acts 12, 11, when Peter was come to himself, he said, now I know of a surety that the Lord had sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod, delivered me, Ekero, lift me up, take me out. And then there's another word here, of course, this is the big one here, this is uh, Sozo, uh, 4982, is Sozo, and there's so much on this that, um, it, it, everything else is really encompassed in this. You, if you read Sozo, you'll read about all of these other words too. So uh, we'll we'll go and read about other words first, and then uh, saved and savior. We'll look at these uh, definitions here. This way, when we run across them, we'll know uh, what we're talking about here. Um, and this word here is yasha, of course. Uh, it means save and savior to be saved. Uh, we get the word Yahshua, uh, and it comes from uh, well, it's not doesn't come from, but this this word here, Hosanna. We'll look at that a little later. Uh, Yasha, uh, the Lord saved Israel. Yasha, Israel, uh, that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the sea, so they were saved. Yasha. Um, uh, for the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Uh, so, and there's uh, a whole bunch of words here. There's 205 uh, words, verses, or 205 times that this uh, Yasha is in the Old Testament. And it, um, this is this is a derivative of it also. This is the, the feminine now of the verb, uh, this is Yeshua, means salvation or help, salvation, deliverance. Um, 
Theological Word Book 929. I'm sure it's the same thing here. 929, yeah. So this is uh, salvation. Um, uh, I have waited for thy salvation, O God. Um, and Moses uh, said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you to this day. For the Egyptians, who, who you have seen today, you shall see them again no more. When they were standing on the bank of the river, and, the, and it parted the sea, uh, the Reed Sea. Exodus 14, 13. Uh, Exodus 15 and 2. Uh, the Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. He is my God. I will prepare him in habitation, my father's God, and I will exalt him. So this is all about salvation. And that's 78 times in the Bible. TWOT 929. And there's a lot here. You can't just, uh, if you have it, there's kinds of salvation. The, look, Yasha and its derivatives are used 353 times. So all the derivatives of Yasha, Yeshua, uh, kinds of salvation. Uh, can't read all this. Uh, salvation may not only be offensive, but also defensive. Okay. Spiritual meaning, the word save. Uh, develop the theological meaning in that God saves by foregoing sin and by changing the character of an individual. So, yeah, we just can't sin, sin, sin and, and, and expect to be saved. We got to change. We got to become holy. Hagios, we have to change. Yeah, so I, will, I will save them from all their backslidings in which they have sinned. So, uh, you know, there's nothing we can do. Uh, all we can do is pray to God and uh, <laughs> help us, you know. Uh, pray to God, but please, God, remove this lust from me. You know what he's going to do? He's going to put you on a beach where they're shooting the, uh, the, the swimsuit issue of, uh, of the magazine. You know, so you, so you don't pray for things like that. You just pray, God, your will be done, please. You know, you know what the problems I have. So that, uh, Ezekiel 20, uh, 37, 23. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them uh, out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned, and will cleanse them, so they shall be my people, and I will be their God. So that's why, you know, uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, you know, deliver us from evil. You know, uh, the help us, you know, not walk in places where we're not supposed to be walking. So we have to do things our, our own, but it's really not us doing it. It's God doing it. It's working in us to save us. And we just can't be sinners and get saved. You know, uh, uh, David realized this and he prayed, deliver me from blood guiltness. Oh, my God, thou God of my salvation. In Psalms 51, 14. Uh, after he's what he did with uh, Bathsheba and all of that stuff, you know, deliver me from blood guiltness, uh, my salvation. And Psalm 79 and 9, help us, O God, of our salvation for the glory of thy name, which is Yeshua, which is Savior, and deliver us and purge away our sins for thy name's sake. And Jeremiah 17, 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. So parallels here. Salvation becomes a dynamic force, being emotional, bringing emotional and physical well-being. And that, that, you know, it's all connected. You know, if you feel good, <laughs> you know, if your mind is right, you, you, you're going to feel good. You're going to look good, too. Um, salvation and righteousness. Uh, uh, 51 8 uh, right, my salvation of generation to generation okay character of God revealed uh, like I said we can't read all this uh, it's all good stuff here the, the salvation with God accomplished reveals his universal reign his kingdom over the entire world allows him to work salvation for whomever he wills I like that Further deeds of salvation destroy the purposes of the forces of evil, often personified as the sea and the sea monster. Uh, 7412. 
for God is uh, my king of all, working salvation in the midst of the earth. Um, let me see. Um, further salvation witnesses to the fact that God cares about his people. Salvation flows from his love. Deuteronomy 7, 7, because the faithful comprehend God's steadfast love to turn to him for deliverance in times of distress. Salvation is thus God's love in action. Psalms 109, 26, help me, O Lord, my God, O save me according to thy mercy. Salvation also witnesses to the active presence of God among his people and with his leaders. Many commissioned with a task what promised his presence in special way. God promised Jeremiah, I am with you to deliver you. Jeremiah was later imprisoned and at various times his life was endangered, uh, but his uh, opponents were never able to destroy him. Moses too succeeded by this promise in Exodus 3.12. Thus the presence of God among his people accomplishes their deliverance from adversaries and troubles. And he said, certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth this people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. So God tells you, you can uh, take that to the bank. Uh, repentance and trust, uh, hymns of praise, future salvation. The return of Israel from captivity is anticipated in the language of salvation. Yahweh says, I will save you from afar. Since God considers the people his flock, he declares, I will save my flock. They shall no longer be a prey. Um, Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, there is no other. Uh, the prophets look to the time when salvation will affect all nations and be everlasting. Isaiah foresees the salvation coming through the suffering servant. Good. So he saw Jesus uh, in his visions. Because of the servant's obedient endurance of suffering, God promises, I will give you a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Isaiah 49 and 6. In other words, the acts of salvation in the Old Testament build toward the final act of salvation, which will include all peoples under its possible blessing. Uh, Isaiah 52 and 10, the Lord hath, hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of God. They might not all participate in it, but they're going to see it. And, uh, of course, uh, Sozo, Deuteronomy, uh, TDNT7, of course, is down here. And what else we got here? TDNT7. So, yeah, TDNT7. We'll get into that. Um, and that's, that's Yeshua. All right. And then uh, Savior in the uh, Greek is Soter or Soter. Of course, it comes from Sozo. So this uh, Savior is 24 times in, in the Bible, and it's most likely talking about Jesus most of the time, if not all of the time. Uh, Luke 147, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. And that's, uh, what's her name? That's Mary talking. And uh, for those who think she was without sin, uh, why would she need a Savior if she was without sin? So she was without sin. And she is dead and buried. Uh, she didn't, uh, wasn't assumed into heaven. There was no uh, ascent, ascension by Mary. She's uh, dead and buried, whatever they did with her. Uh, for unto you this day, uh, born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Luke 2.11. Um, Christ, the Savior of the world. John 4.42. Acts 5.31. Uh, had to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Uh, Acts 13, 23, of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a savior, Jesus. Um, uh, for our conversation is in heaven from whence we also look for the savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians 3, 20. 
And all of these have to do with uh, Jesus, God, our Savior, our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Savior. And this um, this will be TDNT 7. This is part of the uh, Sozo. So you can see Sozo starts on TDNT 7, 965. And this particular aspect of it is TDNT 7, page 1003. So, you know, you're talking about a lot of pages here. And we can't go through all of this. But this Hosanna, this one here comes from the Old Testament. It's Hosanna. Uh, it's, uh, it's of Hebrew or origin. It's from 3467. That's the Jose. That's the Yasha. Save. And they added this uh, na on it. Like Shanana. This is Hosanna. Now, I beseech you, pray. We pray, please, use an entreaty. So... It's uh, uh, Yasha and Na, Hosanna. Be propitious, come to us now, please. Hosanna in the, the, to the highest, you know, when, they, when, they, when he was coming in uh, on the young cult of an ass. Hosanna, save us now. And then uh, salvation is two, two words in the Greek. They're from... Soterion, this is part of the Sozo. Soterion is the uh, the noun, and 4991. These are all part of the Sozo study, and Soteria uh, is salvation, and deliverance. So you got 4991 and 4992. All of these are going to be in that theological dictionary seven, um, and salvation. Uh, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Uh, be it known, therefore, unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and, and that they will hear it. And it's called the, the helmet of salvation in Hebrews 6.17, along with the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of the God. And then uh, Titus 2.11, for the, the, the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared unto all men. And the salvation here is 43 verses with salvation in it. And uh, we can't go through all of them here now. But you know that uh, Soteria is a big part of this, uh, this study here. And here we got salvation. <laughs> Look at all of this stuff here. I um, Let me see. I got um, a bunch of verses here. Let me just put this because I, I can read this stuff forever. I mean, it, it, it's there's just so much to read and I try to glean stuff out of it. But there's some verses that I got uh, talking about salvation, which is uh, only only in Christ. You'll find this uh, salvation. And that would be uh, Luke, Luke 1, 69, 1, 69. All right. And hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Uh, 230. 230. Luke 230. Uh, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Uh, John 10 9. John 10 9. Uh, uh, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture by me. That's it. Uh, Acts 4.12. 4.12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Sozo. Uh, and Acts 15.11. Acts 15.11. Hmm. But believe uh, that through the grace of, of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved even as they. Trying to see how this is by God, by Jesus only. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, Romans 5 9. I get some of these out of here. Romans 5 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. And then 1 Thessalonians 5 9. 1 Thessalonians 5 9. For God had not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. And then Hebrews 5, 9, all these 5, 9 verses here. Hebrews 5, 9. Uh, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. That's good. And then Hebrews 9, 28. Hebrews 9, 28. I'm scared me. I don't think it was 9, 28. Uh, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation so taria salvation so and, and christ came to earth to be our salvation we just looked at luke uh, 2 so we're going to see something in 211 211 Wow. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Read that already. Luke uh, looks like 1910. I can't read my own writing. 1910. Uh, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And. So that's why he came. This is all the reasons why he came. John 317. John 3. 317? What you mean 316? 317. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And then Acts 531. A lot of verses here. I'm just I'm running through all of these things here. That have to do with him being our savior and him saving us and through only through him are we saved. Acts 5 31. Uh, him hath God exalted with his right hand to be prince and savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. 5:31. And 13:23. Acts 13:23. All right. Uh, of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 1.15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. <laughs> I'm the chief sinner. I like that. Second Timothy, uh, Second Timothy one ten. Let me get some of these out of here. I'll leave that Titus up there. It's in the same neighborhood. Second Timothy one ten. Uh, but is now made manifest by the appearing, an epiphany of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Um, 2 Timothy 1.10, manifest by the appearing, appearing is epiphany, made manifest. That's at best. Epiphany comes from this word too, phanaruo, manifest. Oh, there it is, Savior. I'm looking to so terror. <laughs> they manifest uh, sometimes it's right there and right in front of your face. All right. Uh, Hebrews 7.25. Hebrews 7.25. Yeah. 
Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he liveth, he ever liveth, to make intercession for them, to save them. He's able. And first John four fourteen. First John four fourteen. Wrong way. Okay. Well, we got a chance to go through a lot of verses. And and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be Savior of the world. I mean it's this is basic gospel, you know. Uh why did he come? To save us, to be our savior. I mean, we go through everything. We can do all these studies on the 70 weeks and on this, that, and the other thing. But the bottom line is, you know, Jesus came, born, lived, died, and ascended to be what? Our savior. So, and there is redemption through Christ. Redemption through Christ. In Romans 3. I know we all sinned. I think that might be in this area, in this neighborhood here. Yeah, Romans three twenty four. Uh, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So you, you can't get around. You got to get redemption. Uh, is uh, apoplutrosis uh, redemption is part of deliverance. Um, the, the ransom uh, six twenty nine six twenty nine. That's redemption. So you, you would have all of these verses here. First uh, Corinthians one thirty, uh, but of uh, excuse me, uh, but of him ye, are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. And Galatians three thirteen is that here no we'll have to look at that oh yeah galatians 3 13. but there's all the redemption verses and that's that's all part of this we have to look at that uh galatians three thirteen. we'll let's see what this word is here 313 uh who has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for his written curse is everyone that hangs on a tree so he redeemed us that's 1805 and that is ex agorazzo it comes from agora which means uh buy redeem it also means uh, the marketplace when you have agoraphobia you have a fear of uh open spaces and agora is the market or the marketplace so agoraphobia you don't go outside uh ex agorazzo to redeem so that goes with the other the, the, the hebrew words for like pada and gaal and these are all synonymous i'm sure if you throw 18.5 in the septuagint you're going to go and run into gaal and pada and all of that stuff um so christ has redeemed us from the curse uh galatians 4 5 to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons um Okay, so and then um, Colossians 114, that's over here, and whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. And Titus 214, Titus 214, it's probably the other redemption word. Uh, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous unto good works redeem 3045 3084 oh that's Latruel. all of these words are synonymous Latruel, uh whew, Latruel, apolutrosis okay 3083 that's a ransom all right a ransom is lutron. We're familiar with these words. And luo, to loose, bind and loose. That's luo, to, 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 to declare innocent. Um, but we trusted that it would be, 
had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this today, it's the third day. So they, they're talking about, uh, here it is, 2.14. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto him a people. Okay. Uh, redeemed, a couple of things. So there's the word redeemed here. And that's a Lutruo. It's three times in the Bible. Uh, Hebrews 9.12. Uh, Hebrews 9, 12, well, we got 9, 15 here. Let's put it in context. 9, 12. Uh, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once in the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. And that's the 3085, Lutrosis. Uh, it was 9.12. And then 1 Peter 1.18. Get this one out of here. 1 Peter 1.18. I'll leave that there. 1 Peter 1.18. See if we run into any more redemption here. Uh, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by the traditions of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who was verily foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your hope, that your faith and hope might be in God. And then 5.9 uh, another 5 9. Oh, we, uh, Revelation 5 9. We got Romans 5 9. We got Hebrews 5 9. Now we're going to do Revelation 5 9. Revelation 5 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou was slain and has redeemed us to God by the blood, thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Thou hast redeemed us. That's the Agora. That's the Agorazzo to buy. He bought us. We are bought with a price. Agorazzo. That's being five nine. And you, you you find all of this stuff, that all of these verses that I just threw up here, uh, in the back of your Thompson chain. When you look up these words, you'll see them back there. I just happened to, uh, to pluck them out as I was going through. And um, let's see if I have any more of these. Thirty eight sixty. 4506, 3860, is that up here? Did we look at that already? Okay, 4506. There's this one word that I read a lot on, this real my, a, a real my, all right? 1807 and 4982, okay? And the other one was um, 3488, I didn't look at this, did I? Yeah, I think I did. Yeah, I looked at that, okay? And then the salvation, we didn't read this. There's a lot of stuff here I can read to you, but um, the anointed, uh, here's the words here for anointed. Uh, Moshiach, we, we read this already, okay. Uh, Christos is means anointed, that's 5547 Christos. Uh, comes from 5546, uh, oh, 5548 which is uh, Creo, that's anoint. And we saw this Messiah has come, we saw that already. And there was something else I had here. Where is it? I can't remember what that's that, that, that. And this um, uh, Rio, let me let me do a little bit on this. What time is it? Oh man, it's 809. Man, time flies when you're having fun. Um, whoops, where was I? It's here. Um, let's see if I got that. This uh, escaped. Um, I think that was the last thing I looked at. This word here, 6412 is polite. Escape fugitives. Eh, it's not really uh, polite, means deliver. That's 6403. That's over here. Uh, delivered. Eh, okay. I just threw it up there at the last minute. Uh, and then, 
we read these, I think. Um, maybe not die. I don't know. Yeah, I think I read all of this. But this uh, Rio, uh, I looked at uh, 4506. I spent time uh, in the Theological Dictionary looking at this, the liver. And as you can see, it's um, Ruomai. Uh, means deliverer or deliver to draw oneself to rescue to deliver to deliver and uh, theological dictionary six starting on page 998 uh, I pulled something out here to deliver uh, let me see uh, in accordance in accordance with the basic sense of the Greek term ruomai is used for the deliverance and keeping of men by the gods it says the gods but we know it's god so this is just the general use of the word in the greek but that's basically we, we, we could just take the gods out and put god in there and uh, the distinctiveness of the old testament usage like i said i put it i put the number in the septuagint and i couldn't find anything but it's 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 there it just doesn't show up as with, with a number so the, the picture is different when the, the total Old Testament use of, of Rulamai is considered. For a theocentric understanding, and that's that means a God-centered understanding, replaces the basic anthropocentric, which means a human-centric understanding. So the God-centered understanding replaces the basic human-centered uh, centric understanding uh, within which the possibilities of the meaning of the word are developed in the Greek. The nature and possibility of salvation are no longer determined by laws of being which obtained for both gods and men and which are known from experience. They are determined by the creating and sustaining will of Yahweh for whom the salvation of the people and the individual is part of his creative action in the salvation history commenced by him so that's it it's all by him by him for him uh, and he saves us and this um uh, thus the word deliverer is named for him and you'll see that in uh, isaiah 63 16 isaiah 63 16 yes sir uh, so much that is uh, doubtless thou art our father though abraham be ignorant of us and israel acknowledges not thou O lord art our father our redeemer thy name is from everlasting and this redeemer here is the the gaal and you'll see that a lot for redeem that's one of the ones for redeem and i think this is the one isaiah 63 16 there's a bunch of these that you throw back into the uh, into the old testament 63 and you'll see the word rule my but you won't see a number next to it i'm pretty sure this might be one of them 63 uh, Abraham, not we must carry Israel and Epinot Allah and carry This is it here. Rus, Ru, Ruse, Amas, RK to Anoma. First of the name, of her. yeah, that's it right there. See, they, they put the thing here, but there's no number, so I can't look at it. The 4506 would be here, uh, but it's the um, if you look at the uh, the Hebrew, it would be this word here. Um, where is God? Here it is 1350. Gaal. So that's the word Gaal. They use a rule my for that. And uh, that will be the King James. Uh, Doubtless thou our father, that Abraham be ignorant of us, Israel acknowledges not that Lord our, our Redeemer. 
So it's delivered. Um, for since I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, he hath done evil to me this time. Neither hast thou delivered thy people at all. Exodus 5.23. Exodus 5.23. So Moses is complaining. He says, I should have me do all these things. And you haven't delivered us yet. Come on, man. For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, he hath done evil to these people, neither hast thou delivered. And there's another word here. Um, not Sal. I don't know if I gave you that. Um, to snatch away. I think I gave it to you. But I want to see the uh, Septuagint where if it is not Sal. Uh, where is it? That might be it right there. Eruso, yeah. They say they have different uh, prefixes and suffixes and things, but there's the Ruo in there. So as you can see, there's no Strong's number there. So that's the word for uh, uh, delivered, 53, 57. So um, what else? Uh, there's something else here. Uh, when finally a man acknowledges that he is guilty before Yahweh, uh, the basis of his salvation is Yahweh's mercy. And you got all kinds of verses here. Uh, the, and the real act of salvation is the restoration of a relationship with God undisturbed by man's guilt. Thus, the righteous man prays, deliver me from all thy, all my transgressions. And there's verses, I can't go through all of these here, uh, but it's, let me just look, Psalms 31. Psalms 31. Uh, this is the east sword here, Psalms 31. When you, when you, and uh, two, he says, um, bow down thine ear to me, deliver me speedily, and be my strong rock, for I am a rock for an house of defense to save me. So you got save me here, you got the uh, Yasha in here, and you got deliver me also, you got the uh. Mat Natsal, to snatch away. And I'm curious what words they use here. Uh, clean up, rush me, oops, and three, tap there. Talk on All right. Oper, uh, Oper, That's probably it there. As you can see, there's no strongs no more. Anyway, uh, I can't go through all of these. There's a whole bunch of them. Uh, so in, 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 in content, it always means to save. Men are always the object, and God is always the author of salvation. And that's really all we have to know. Uh, we need to be saved. <laughs> we're, we're always the object, and, and God is always the author. So I'm going to end it here. Went a little over, but that's okay. Uh, thank you, God. For bringing us together here you know we just take one word and um, it takes us where you want us want us to go and uh, we thank you God for all of this stuff you know that we can do we can look at and research and uh, understand your word and um, thousands of books I mean Solomon said it if all the books that were written they would, they would fill up the whole earth you know uh, about you and your word and what you got for us. The whole world's crazy. We know that. We're sitting back, we're watching, <laughs> almost laughing at the ridiculousness of people and what they're doing. And and uh, we know you're doing everything, so we're just going to sit back and watch. I'm not going to say enjoy the show, but uh, it's a show, and you're putting it on. So it's all for you and your glory, and that's all we got to worry about. We thank you. We love you. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. That's it. I'm sorry. So I know I jumped around a lot and there was just so much in there, but uh, we could do it again probably next week. Who knows? We'll see. Whew. Thank you, God. Let me turn this off. <laughs>